I don't know how many people might have watched the previous uh, videos I made on this micro TV station scheme I had in mind. But this is going to be the last video because uh, that project really didn't work out for me. Now, originally, I this is my Blonder Tongue age mod modulator that, that, that I was going to use. And it actually put out enough RF uh, if I put an antenna on it where I could transmit the television sets in my house. But that turned out to be that I had to sit down and realize what it is I wanted to accomplish. Now this thing, uh, as a transmitter, it just didn't work out well. I've tried various antennas on it, uh, put some antennas outside, inside the house, different places, and although it did work, it didn't work well. The other thing is, I, uh, I really had to think about what it was that I wanted to accomplish. Now basically what I originally wanted to do is I wanted to transmit a vintage content to my vintage televisions that I have in my collection. But that's not really what I wanted to do. Uh, here, for example, here is my Admiral 30C1. I just acquired this just this past Saturday. I hope to restore it sometime uh, during this year. Now, I don't run these antique televisions. I don't watch them. I don't sit down and watch television on them. Uh, they're merely, for me, what they represent is my experiences as a child growing up with television because that's what through the 50s I grew up with television and they're for me they're they're museum pieces so the only time these sets are really operated is when I turn them on to make sure they're still working and run them for a short while uh, to heat them up a little bit and more importantly to demonstrate them uh, if someone comes over I could I can turn this on and I can demonstrate it but the object is is what do I plug in or, or feed into the set to demonstrate the set. And my idea was, of course, is to put uh, vintage content, uh, video content, that would have normally been seen on a television like this, for example, to, to show what it might have looked like. So getting back to this blonder tongue age modulator, that really wasn't going to give me what I was really looking for. Now I had another scheme in mind. I thought that what I would do is instead of using an antenna, I would just simply uh, have a closed circuit television cables running to various parts of the house where I have some of these old TVs sitting. That might have been a good idea, but it, it, it really that's really not what I wanted to do. Uh, so I'm going to show uh, what my latest plan is <laughs> for uh, accomplishing what I'm actually trying to accomplish. Now, for example, here is my Zenith Wadsworth from 1951 that I have restored to operating condition. Sitting in my living room for now, maybe not in the exact place where I want to have it eventually, but it's here uh, sitting in its place. And... If you've seen the last video I made on this, I had to do a repair. One of the uh, IF tubes, 6AU6, went out. But I had demonstrated this set to someone a week before that, and it worked just fine. And what I used was this RCA CED player uh, to demonstrate it. But that really isn't what I wanted to do. It's only what I had set up at the time. So let's move from this. Now here is my 1988 RCA Color Track 2000 monitor. I've had that set for a lot of years. Uh, it's now 30 years old, so I guess I don't know where they, the the term vintage comes in. I know antique. Uh, the to use the term antique, the item really should be 100 years old or better to be officially called an antique. Uh, where vintage comes in, I can't say, but I would say that this is a, now a vintage television, NTSC, P2, 
picture tube television, and I do watch this set. I run laser discs uh, on it occasionally, uh, RCA CED uh, video discs on it occasionally, and and the occasional VHS tape. So I do uh, actually watch this set from time to time. Uh, in my front room, this is my main watcher. This is a 4K uh, Vizio screen uh, with a, a Roku box on it. And in, in my living room, this is what I watch mostly. And uh, uh, if we go over here, here is the equipment that used to be in my theater. If anybody's watched any of my earlier videos, I have a little home theater that I call Dreamland, and this was the original equipment in it. Uh, this Denon uh, AVR, uh, this Sony Blu-ray player, Toshiba HD DVD, uh, Denon DVD player. Now here's my Pioneer Laser Disc Player. It's not a real high-end model, but it's a very good one, and it works just fine. I bought into CED about 1982 or 83. Uh, I thought it was a good idea then. Now it's just a curiosity and a collector's item, but this is my SJT400 player that I run from time to time. But more to the point, this is what I've come up with for demonstrating my vintage televisions. Here's a Popcorn Hour uh, video player. Uh, it's a, uh, a media, they call it a media player. I bought this years and years ago, and it's worked faithfully. It has a terabyte hard drive inside with a lot of uh, movie videos that I recorded off the air that are on, on the hard drive in this. And right now I've got it, um, it, it does put out a high definition through the HDMI output on it. However, I'm using it as NTSC with uh, composite video and uh, right and left audio. For right now, I have this thing connected in uh, to my old Sony VHS tape deck, which I've had for a lot of years, and it works very well. I still run tapes through it now and then. Anyways, the point is that this is right now just set up as a test. I'm experimenting. And what I'm thinking of doing is maybe eventually finding a small age -old modulator, not the I won't be using the blonder tongue for this, uh, something like what this VHS machine does. And I'm going to set up a portable, kind of a portable device. And I'm going to use this popcorn hour to demonstrate my vintage televisions in case anybody wants to see them and wants to see how they operate. But for right now, I'm going to show you how this operates. And uh, I'm going to run it into my ColorTrack 2000 TV. So I'll set up to do that and, and show just exactly how this works. Okay, so I've got the popcorn hour media player booted up and running into my Color Track 2000 TV. And uh, the first thing we're going to look at is, is the content that I have on my hard disk. And we go down to video. I have a lot of movies on here. I recorded quite a lot of movies uh, when I had satellite from Turner Classic Movies and saved them all. I actually recorded them on DVD R's and then I decrypted those and put them on this hard disk, so I've still got them. I've had these for years. Um, just an example um, of how this works. Um, here's a very rare movie, The Abominable Snowman. Um, we can bring that up. And like I say, I don't want to get... Uh, um, copyrighted out of the water here, but... And just like this. In danger, I'm sure. Danger? Hey, what's this? The scissors, Jack! The whole movie is actually on there. And there's, there's quite a lot of movies on this uh, terabyte hard drive. Um, All the King's Men, that's a great movie. Arizona, that's a very old, rare, very rare movie. 
let's see. Here's a, 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 a fun one with Laurel and Hardy blackheads. But anyways, I can run any of these movies from my uh, popcorn hour. But let's, uh, let's go back. And okay, now I have a uh, 350 gig drive plugged into that USB port. We'll go there. Now what I have on here is most, in fact, all of this stuff is television shows. Here you see the first selection on the top, Beverly Hillbillies Downloads. That actually came off of archive.org. This is all public domain, so it's really not anything that should get bumped off. I'm just going to pay, play the beginning of this clip. I, I'm hoping that it doesn't get uh, copyright bumped, but it, it's public domain. At any event, let's just see how that runs. This is Beverly Hills. And here comes the Beverly Hillbillies. There was actually a pilot for this that never was aired that's quite good. If you get on YouTube, uh, do a search for Beverly Hillbillies and you can see the unaired pilot. And you'll also notice that the music at that uh, on that one was quite different. Now let's go back and see what else I've got on here. Uh, these Bewitched uh, uh, are decrypted from DVDs I purchased. Uh, I wanted to say that none of this stuff ever goes out of my house, so I don't. I never pirate anything. I don't believe in that. I believe uh, strictly in supporting those who produce movies to sell to us. I, I don't believe in pirating. So if anybody gets that idea, that's not the case here. Here's an interesting clip that I got. Here's Dumont. Uh, this I think this first clip is uh, just uh, Dumont uh, Network. Uh, clips. This is the Dumont Television Network. And let's see, I have a Maury Amsterdam show. Uh, here's another Dumont. Let's see what that looks like. By the way, this thing will play almost any kind of... We'll now, get back to Captain Video in one minute. Rangers ever tackle a job you really look forward to doing? Oh boy, you say, rubbing your hands together, that's for me, that's right up my alley. Well, there's one big job that's right up everybody's alley, Rangers. That's the job of fighting discrimination. Seeing to it that the next fellow gets a fair chance, regardless of his race or religion. We've all got a talent for that. Let's see, Schoolhouse 1941. Television set commercial. <laughs> That's a fun one. Um, let's take a look at it. Wally, pay attention. What are you doing over there? I'm just explaining a simple fact of ours, Mr. Delmar. What simple fact? Mary, that in direct view electronic cathode ray tubes, such as you find in our Dumont set, it's possible to increase dimension without uh, image disintegration or loss of definition. Well, it may be a fact, but it ain't simple. What do you mean? Wally Cox, I remember him in uh, Mr. Peepers. Let's go back a page. Uh, let's see, Fury TV show. I have the Honeymooners on here. I Dream of Jeannie. I Love Lucy. Here's uh, an I Mary Joan downloads from archive.org. Uh, the Invaders, uh, two seasons. The Invaders television show, by the way, that was a shame that they ruined that show. I thought from this first season that that was one of the best uh, uh, 1966 science fiction shows on the air. And uh, uh, they apparently they lost interest or there wasn't enough money in it. And if you see the second season of The Invaders, you can see how it just went downhill completely. Uh, let's see what else I've got. My Little Margie downloads. Um, NBC 1950 and older. Let's take a look at that.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's special features, the coming buyer's market in automobiles. Then a new department, the sports section. And finally, if we don't run fresh out of time, which quite likely we may, we'll have a piece on trade across the Iron Curtain in Europe. Now, your tomorrow morning's headlines tonight. Willis Overland cuts automobile prices $25 to $270. The top cut is on Willis Overland's uh, well-known Jeepster. Now you'll notice at once that while this is the second post-war automobile price, two hundred seventy dollars far the biggest one. General Motors, in general, cut prices between ten and fascinating. So you can see that I can put a lot of interesting content on on the hard drives on this popcorn hour video player or or media player. Um, here's science fiction theater. Um, that's been released on DVD, by the way. I guess there's a new release of it. I, it's supposed to be more higher quality and more reliable than what they were selling on eBay, which was crap. The Roy Rogers Show. The Lone Ranger TV shows. Yeah, that's, uh, those are, those are uh, discs that I bought. But I decrypted them so I could conveniently show them. Here's the Three Stooges pilot that, that never got seen. Hello. 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 I'm Bo. Simple and screwy. I'm Shemp. Looney and ludicrous. I'm Larry. <laughs> yes, the Three Stooges. Tonight, interior. That's a uh, show that never, uh, never made it. They never, uh, it's too bad. It, it could have been a lot of fun watching that. And let's see, Univac commercial, vintage commercials. Let's take a look at the Univac commercial. Univac, the giant electronic brain made only by Remington Rand, takes business statistics from magnetic tape, letters, numbers, and punctuation marks processing them through its electronic circuits at phenomenal speeds. Univac can compute payrolls electronically, then produce printed checks in a flash. Over 8,000 checks an hour with this high-speed printer. Univac leads the field of electronic computing. Interesting, isn't it? So like I say, uh, especially from downloading uh, uh, public domain stuff off of archive.org and stuff, I can put a lot of stuff in here. So the bottom line is, is what I plan to do is get a small agile modulator to use with that popcorn hour and make something that's portable. And when it comes time to run any of my vintage or antique televisions, I, you can't call them antique, they're all vintage. But any of my televisions, I'll just simply transport it over, plug it into the antenna, and uh, demonstrate it that way rather than the original scheme. So my next video will probably be when I actually create that little portable package that I'll be using to transport from TV to TV uh, when it comes time to uh, demonstrate them. So that's about it. Uh, like I say, the, uh, the micro home uh, television transmitter Forget it. That's that's <laughs> uh, that uh, ship uh, had sunk uh, several months ago. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this video.